Okay, so uh, I'm Kai Blin, and I welcome the opportunity not, to not only be able to give a talk about uh, Summer of Code, but actually some of the stuff I work on in my day job, which is uh, about fighting superbugs with open source software. So I, I heard the criticism yesterday that a lot of the talks were very tool-based. I'm trying a different pitch here, and I'm going a bit more from the why do we do this and what the biology behind all of this uh, perspective. So let's talk a bit about super. Uh, sorry, the wrong one. Um, so let's talk a bit about superbugs and why they uh, why they are a problem. Um, so this is a map uh, from the recent uh, European Centre of Disease Control uh, report on antimicrobial resistance. So the one, the recent one available, uh, published in 2015, and the colours here on the map show how many clinical isolates of uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae were resistant against the commonly used antibiotic that is used in this field. Klebsiella is a bit of a nasty bug that doesn't respond to a lot of antibiotics. Flu fluoroquinolones are the ones we most commonly use. And as you can see, if you live in southern or uh, eastern Europe, um, if you've got one of these, chances are pretty high that it's resistant against fluoroquinolones. So it's really, uh, and you can go through the report and it's full of pictures like that and they're all pretty scary and the bad thing about this is it looks much, much worse than the rest of the world. So Europe is actually doing pretty good. Um, if you look at maps for uh, the US, it's much worse. So um, basically we need to go and fight this. The question of course is um, let's figure out the problem at the root a bit. Um, why do we actually go to uh, get superbugs? And the reason is that we plainly misuse antibiotics. So this is a picture I took in a Walmart a couple of years ago. And you can basically go in and just buy antibiotics right off the shelf. And because simple antibiotics don't work anymore, you get like one uh, wound paste that has triple antibiotics in there with the hope that at least any of these still work. So obviously now you get like bugs that have resistance against all three antibiotics in the end. So what can we do to actually get ourselves out of this situation again? Fortunately, um, fighting bacteria with chemicals is not something that humans have invented. Bacteria have been doing it for millennia. So what we're doing in our lab and in a bunch of other labs around the world, uh, this is happening as well, is we're going for a bacteria that produce compounds that we can use to kill other bacteria. We're personally working with the uh, actinobacteria. I've just gotten a selection of a bunch of them. They're all very beautiful on plates, so I really enjoy working with them. They're, a bit, they're growing a bit slow and they're a bit like uh, of divas sometimes and stuff like that, but they're still really, really interesting because they produce natural products, natural products with a very great diversity of chemical structures. So a lot of these are also really, really hard to synthesize as like an organic chemist and nature is doing a really good job at getting these things done. So just to have an overview uh, of that, sort of from top left to right, we have uh, oxacillin, which is a third generation penicillin-like uh, substance. We have nicin, that's a food additive and food preservative that's been used since the 40s and so far nothing has happened in terms of extra new resistance against that. So uh, that's pretty nice. Vancomycin, which is one of these antibiotics of last resort uh, that is currently sort of stopping to work for a lot of the bugs we're using it as last resort against because we're using it so much these days because nothing else is working anymore. Uh, there's tetracycline, that's the small one that's sort of squished in, in the middle of that. Uh, it's a pretty famous one. And kiromycin I've mainly introduced, it's not used in human therapy, it's just the one that we happen to spend most of our time on uh, in some other research projects. So basically what is the idea of the software that I'm working on? It's basically going from like DNA sequences that we can now pretty cheaply obtain for bacteria and looking at our analytical and chemical data and basically trying to figure out how to identify uh, new antibiotics based on the genomes of these bacteria. So the software I was talking about, and that I'm not going to go into much detail because you can find all of that online um, and ask me about uh, in the coffee and lunch break about this. The main thing I want to talk about here is that I'm like presenting the software pretty big here, but basically what we're doing in research all the time, and that's I think people don't acknowledge that enough, is we're standing on the shoulder of giants, or not actually giants, we're standing on the shoulder of quite a bunch of other projects. So I mean, just looking at this, this is, a selection of all the uh, open source tools that we're using and I'm pretty sure while writing this list I've forgotten a bunch of them, right? So it's really uh, something I would like to acknowledge is that there's a, 
quite a bunch of things that we are using that uh, are open source and we couldn't have done it without them. So I would like to sort of big shout out to all these projects, maybe apart from Meme because they, I, as I just found out, they claim they're open source, but they actually aren't. Um, so if anybody has a good idea of how to replace that, that's sort of my next project there. Um, and I'd like to finish up with uh, just a thanks to all the collaborators and a big shout out to all the anti-smash contributors there. And uh, thanks to the Novo Nordisk Foundation for funding me to attend the conference and to work on this great open source project. And yeah, thanks for your attention. <laughs>